Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Rob Stark. And in today's video, I wanted to cover what I thought were my five most underrated skills in Brawl Stars and how you can use these skills to help you improve your game. All right, let's start out with the first skill, which is knowing which matchups you can win. So in general, there are certain matchups that each brawler is more likely to win or lose. And throughout the game, you want to either take advantage of those matchups. If they're ones you're more likely to win, you might want to follow that brawler around and kill them more often than not. And if there's ones you're more likely to lose, it's probably a good idea to avoid those brawlers unless you're able to help team kill them. So one of the ways you're able to figure this out is I actually did break down a few of these in all of my how-to videos, I go through them. So far, I've only covered Shelly, Nita, Jesse, and Bull. I'll put the links in the description if you want. But in general, how to figure that out is it breaks down to how fast both you and the opponent can deal damage. For instance, a Colt is able to deal a lot of damage very fast, whereas a Poco or a Jesse is going to be a lot slower. And then how easy it is for them to land their shots. A Colt is probably not very likely to hit all their shots. But for example, a Poco, it's very easy to hit their shots. A Jesse, it's a little difficult to hit shots sometimes as it travels kind of slow. Also breaks down to how fast each of you can reload. Um, Anita is able to reload very fast compared to a Jesse, so it makes Anita more likely to win that matchup. And then also based on their current health. So while I don't want to break down every single matchup as that would take a really long time, you do want to keep those things in mind as you try and figure out which matchups you're more likely to win, and which you're more likely to lose. Definitely keep all this in mind throughout the match and use that to your advantage. If you're going around and following brawlers, if you're going around and following brawlers that you're not likely to win versus them one versus one very often, you're probably being too aggressive versus them and maybe try and rotate and switch onto a different brawler. All right, so my second underrated skill is strafing and dodging shots. Now, obviously, Everyone knows dodging shots is important, but I think it's way more important than most people realize. It does a couple things, right? So one, it's going to help limit the opponent's supers. And I'm sure you realize how important this is. Supers are often one of the main ways enemies deal damage. It helps them overcome objectives. It can wipe out teams and smash and grab. It can give you big advantages in bounty, right? Supers are very important in the game, and they're one of the most useful ways to get kills. If you can help limit how often people are getting their super, this is obviously an easy way to help control the game. Another thing dodging and strafing shots does is it makes it so you have to stop shooting to heal less often. If you're not getting hit, you don't have to stop to heal, right? So if you can try and focus on dodging shots, you can be more aggressive towards the enemy. You can just in general deal more damage to them than they're able to deal towards you. So one of the things to keep in mind to try and figure out how to get better at this is knowing the range of every single brawler and this is something that's just going to take time and practice but you know going through using all the brawlers and facing them you'll start to realize how the shot patterns are for every brawler how fast the shot travels whether it can go around corners well stuff like that and in through that practice it's going to really bit help you figure out how to dodge those shots i really think that's a practice thing another thing that's important is keeping space between yourself and your teammates. If you're right next to a teammate, it's gonna make it a lot easier for the enemy to hit at least one of you and get, in general, more value with their shots. Now, obviously there are gonna be situations where it might demand that you're forced into your teammate if there are other brawlers shooting at you, for example, but it's just in general, try and keep in mind, if you don't have to group up, try not to in general. So one of the things I would recommend to try and get better at dodging or strafing shots is try and spend either a few games every day or maybe 15 to 20 in a row where one of the main things you're focusing on is just dodging shots. If you can really get that practice at it, I think it'll really help you a lot. In general, to get better at it, you sort of really have to focus on it very hard. That way you can really get that improvement and get you know more, gra more gains as opposed to just incremental gains. And then once you get better at it, it becomes more second nature. And then you can just do it in general every game. All right, so my third underrated tip today is knowing when to heal. Too often, I see people shooting these shots where they're really not very likely to hit people, and they might be mid to low health, and they could be healing up. I think that's probably the most often situation where I see this happen, is when you're taking these shots that are probably towards the end of your range and where you know the brawler is that you're shooting at, and you know, they're shots that are, you're not very likely to hit, 
but you're shooting them anyways, right? In those cases, you should probably be spending that time healing up, and then you can come out and you can be more aggressive and you can take shots that are more likely to land and really actually pressure the enemy and actually put some damage on them. Another thing is sometimes people are too aggressive, you know, when they have one or two dead teammates. If one of your teammates is dead and, you know, the other team has a man advantage, it's probably not a good time to be shooting a lot of shots and being very aggressive. If you're spending that time shooting your shots and you end up with low health when your teammates come back and then they want to push up, but you have to heal up and it really can hinder your pushes. Okay, so my fourth underrated tip of the day is knowing awareness of the enemy position. You know, too often it's pretty easy to get flanked by enemies in this game, especially since, you know, people can hide in the grass for one, but also you can be on the edge of a map, for instance, say you're on the right edge of a map, you're not going to be able to see the left edge of the map. So it's important to be able to keep in mind where enemies might be and where they could be. So one of the most important things for that is when enemies die. So when you see an enemy die, it's going to take them four to five seconds to spawn back, and then they have to run up the map to be able to get to you. So one thing to keep in mind is keep that mental timer in your head and count that down, and that'll help you figure out, you know, okay, I'm in the middle of the map. I can't see them yet, but it's likely that they're probably this far up the map based on how long ago they died. Another thing to keep in mind is where your teammates might be and, you know, where the enemy might be shooting at them. So, for instance, one thing, if you have the sound on, oftentimes you can actually hear shots that aren't on your screen. This definitely helps, especially when you know, for instance, that, okay, my team is a Shelly, you know, a Jesse and a Colt. And I know I hear the sound of a Barley attack. Okay, well, you know, that's I'm on the left side of the map. That means there's a Barley somewhere on the right. Um, obviously an enemy because my team doesn't have a Barley. Stuff like that can help you figure out where the enemy is. One of the easiest things is, of course, if your team is in Discord and you can call out positions. Um, that definitely helps a lot. And I think if you can keep this in mind, it'll help you figure out, be less surprised for when enemies are or where they are. And just help you in general with you knowing where to shoot and when to shoot. All right, so tip number five, last tip of the day, is knowing the time, being aware of the time in relation to your team objective. So, for instance, in Smash and Grab, now there is no set time limit, but being aware of one, how much time it takes for gems to spawn, and two, how close the enemy is in terms of how close they are to countdown and then how close you are to countdown. If you notice the enemy is at nine gems, you have to be very aware that you can't fall back. You have to stay aggressive and you can't let them get any more gems unless, for instance, you're at seven gems or you're at eight gems and you think it's easy to get them back. On the other side, if your team has a big lead in terms of gems, keep in mind that you really don't have to be super aggressive. If you're up 8 to 0, if your team is getting hit a lot, just fall back, take your time to regroup. It's okay if they get 4 to 5 gems, you know, it's not a big deal. Just build up your supers, then make a strong push, and then you can finish off the game. Stuff like that. Um, it's important in bounty as well. You know, obviously if you're towards the end of the timer, let's say the enemy actually has a lead but your team has all of your supers, there's probably a good chance that you're going to be able to take back that lead. And then it's very important to keep in mind once you have that lead to fall back. You know, very often you see people where their team will get the lead and then, you know, have a team member who's still being too aggressive and they end up dying and their team loses. It's important to keep in mind, you know, when to fall back. You don't want to fall back too early, probably depending on how far off the map you are, it definitely matters. And if how much time is left. You know, if there's 10 to 15 seconds left, maybe wait a little more to start falling back. Uh, if you're in the 5 to 10 seconds range, you can probably get really close to your spawn. Stuff like that. In Heist, for example, if you're on offense, if there's maybe 40 seconds left, uh, 50 seconds left, and one of your teammates is dead, you pretty much have to wait for them to come back. Um, you, there's still time for them to come back, rather. Um, so maybe let them come back and then make that big push. Maybe use your super just offensively, try and hold them back, and then, you know, use it to get up another super, stuff like that. If you're in showdown, you know, keep in mind how fast the gas is going to come in, um, how close it is to you maybe and towards the objective. If you're in the middle of the map, you know, when it's going to be coming towards you. In brawl ball, how close you are to overtime in terms of saving your super. If you're, you know, if you have your super, it's going to be much easier to score a goal in brawl ball in overtime. Uh, just stuff like that. It's always important to keep in mind the timing and, in general, how close you are to reaching you know, the end of that objective. 
All right, guys, those are all my underrated tips today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.